Shalom. Hope everyone's doing well. This video, um, thus says Yahuwah, I'm going to make things right. Um, before I start, let me say this. I am not a prophet, and I don't believe there's a prophet walking the earth today, so do not think that I'm calling myself a prophet here. I'm going through what the prophets have said in the scriptures, and this is what I'm going to do here. What you see on the screen is his name is not G.O.D. Of course, I've done a video on this, the real G.O.D. of the Bible. This is one of the things that he will make correct. And, you know, the question is, what's wrong? What else is wrong? There's so many different things that's wrong that he have to fix and correct. Um, you have the wicked ruling over the righteous. This is backwards. Boys becoming girls, girls becoming boys. Wickedness is, is just running rampant. It's running wild. And, you know, he's saying enough. The world has been lawless long enough. The Father is saying enough. This is what he's saying. First scripture, Isaiah 42, 14 and 16. The Most High is saying, I've held my shalom a long time, and I have been still and refrained myself. Now I will cry like a woman in labor. I will pant and gasp at once. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetations. I will make the rivers coastlands and I will dry up the pools. I will bring the blind by a way they knew not. I will lead them in the paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them so he's again he's coming off the back telling us that he's held his shalom long enough he's he stood still he's watched and he did nothing and now he's ready to perform he's now he's ready to do his word this is what he's telling to his people in these last days he did not wake us up for nothing it's crazy how some people believe he just woke us up for nothing Okay, this is Hosea 6 and 1. I have some scriptures I have to go through here. It says, Come, let us return to Yahuwah, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. So this is a call to repentance, to turn back to him, to turn back to his Torah, to turn back to his statutes, his commandments, to do what he says to do. Okay, Zechariah 9 and 12, return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare that I will restore double to you. So he's saying, return to your stronghold, return to the position where you were in your land. Return, return unto me so I can restore to you double. He's saying when you come out of these countries, he's going to restore to us double in our land. Isaiah 61 and 7, instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Here we go with double again. Everlasting happiness shall be there. So he's saying double honor. We shall have double in our land. This is talking about, make no mistake about it, therefore in their land. Not no, not the countries where he scattered us to. Not, not, not those countries. He's saying in their land. I don't know why, and I'm, I'm going to have to touch on this later. I don't know why our people's mind is set on that, that captivity, the land of our captivity. And they want to continue in that in that mess they want to build there they want to set up communities there or oh, we twisted we are backwards we are still lost joel 2 25 and 26 so i will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten the crawling locust the consuming locust and the chewing locust my great army which i sent among you you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of Yahuwah your Elohim who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Again, this is his promise. This is his promise to us. Yes, he sent those locusts and those crawling uh, uh, insects and they chewed up the food and the people were hungry and he scattered the people. But now he says he's going to replenish. He's going to place back. He's going to double. 
Jeremiah 30 and 17, for I will restore health to you and heal you from your wounds, says Yahuwah, because they call you an outcast, saying, this is Zion. No one seeks her. So, yes, our bodies are our bodies are ruined right now because of the food that we're eating that we're putting in our bodies. He says, and he's going to heal the wounds because he, you know, our when we disobeyed, he had to afflict on us the curses that's written up in the in the Torah. And so he's going to heal us from those wounds also. And look what it says, because they call you an outcast. The other nations, not all of them, they know that we're the outcasts of Zion. And they're saying, they're, they're making fun. No one seeks her. Who's Zion? No one cares about Zion. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says Yahuwah, thoughts of shalom and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. This is this is his word. It's to give us a future and a hope. But unfortunately, our people are not looking toward the future. They are stuck on the land of their captivity and they're comfortable in their captivity. Jeremiah 30 and 3. For behold, the days are coming, says Yahuwah, that I will bring back the captivity my people, Yashara and Yehuda, says Yahuwah, and I will cause them to return to their land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. So again, he never meant for us to remain in our captivity. He's going to cause, he's going to allow a situation to come up. And I mentioned this before. I touched on that word cause. And for those that have not seen my videos, as many of you guys, you, you have not been through my videos and you there'll be a lot of things you will miss i can't go back over everything that i put out there's so much i need to put out the word cause is a personal thing that gives rise to an action uh phenomenon or condition so he's going to cause a condition he's going to cause something and this condition will not be good make something especially bad happen he's going to make something bad happen that's going to cause us to want to come out of the lands of the countries where he scattered us to into Isaiah 2 2 through 4 now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountains of Yahuwah's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it many people shall come and say come let us go up to the mountain up to of Yahuwah to the house of Al of the house of Elohim Jacob and he will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahuwah from Jerusalem he shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks nations shall not lift up a sword against nations neither shall they learn war anymore so this is him this is the most high taking these wicked nations He's making their weapons of nothing. Their weapon, weapons will be of nothing. And he's making things right that, that are wrong. And there are so many things that are wrong that he's going to make right. And this is what this video is about. This is what he's telling you. Jeremiah 30, 10 and 11. Therefore do not fear, O my servant Jacob, says Yahuwah, nor be dismayed, O Yasharal, for behold, I will save you from afar and your seed from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return, have rest and be quiet, and no one shall make him afraid. For I am with you, says Yahuwah, to save you. He's saying I'm with you to save you. But most people don't know their salvation. You must look at the video that I put up about salvation. You don't know true salvation if you're going to stay in the land of your captivity. You will not be saved. Though I make a full end of all nations, where I have scattered you, yet I will not make a complete end to you, but I will correct you in justice, and I will not let you go altogether unpunished. The people, we're going to come out of these countries. We're going to get within his borders and into the wilderness, but two-thirds will be cut off, and only one-third. So he's not going to let us go altogether unpunished. We're still stiff-necked, hard-headed. We're the same people that we're reading about in scriptures. Revelations 21, 1 through 5. And this is him making 
things right. Now, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the Kadash city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven from Elohim, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Elohim is with men, and he will dwell with them. So this is after the thousand years, and this is him coming down and dwelling with man. And they shall be his people, Elohim himself will be with them and be their Elohim. So after the thousand years, he's going to come down with the new heaven and the earth, and he will be with his people. And Elohim will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. This is him saying, Behold, I'm going to make things right, and I'm going to make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and righteous. These are righteous and true words, and they will come to pass. Okay, for those that their, their belief is just lacking, you just don't know if I should believe these scriptures. I just don't quite, um, I don't know if he can really do what these scriptures are saying. I, I don't really believe he's calling us out of the land, and I just don't have trust or confidence in what I'm hearing, and I'm a little afraid. This is, listen to Joshua 1 and 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Our people are weak. Yes, we awaken and we are in a weak state, and this is part of our condition, but you're going to have to build yourself. You're going to have to build your spirit. You're going to have to build yourself up on the foundations of our true forefathers. It says, do not be afraid nor be dismayed for Yahuwah, your Elohim, is with you wherever you go. Yes, he is with us wherever we go. If you make the step to come in within his borders, this is he will go with you. He will be with you. Don't think you are alone and by yourself or you're doing something that uh, no one else has already done. Jeremiah 32 and 27 says, This is Yahuwah. Behold, I am Yahuwah. He's coming telling you, I am Yahuwah, the Elohim of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? This is the question he's asking us. This is the question he is asking you. Is there anything too hard for me? You don't think that he have power? You don't think that he could bring you within his border and protect you? You don't think he can lead you into the wilderness to protect you? You really need to get this. And fear not. Do not fear. Do not fear when they say, oh, you can't, you shouldn't do this and you should not flee or those people that's running they they're scared if you are scared believe me trust me sit still sit tight do nothing do nothing and you will fall into the hands of the enemy but he's saying be of good courage he's saying he can he can do every, anything nothing's too hard for him this is what he's saying he is able well able to do what he said he's going to do and whether people believe it or not he will do what he says he's going to do so this is his word i'm going to make things right this is what he's saying i'm going to make things right and he went through this word through his word to show you exactly what he means when he says i'm going to make things right i'm going to make crooked places straight he's going to make those crooked places straight he's going to get rid of wickedness he's going to it's going to be done away with once and for all. And his people, wickedness, the wickedness will fall and his people will rise. We always remember, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning that follows. You want to know the end? Find the beginning. Once you find the beginning, you have found the end. Shalom.